you know, where do you work so I can call you and make sure you know that, um, you know, he's safe. Um, the love bomb's like, well, I'll get you back and forth to class, you know. You know, I happen to take classes on the campus, too, you know. Um, the pimp is like, well, you know, why are you here? Um, I can get you up with a hotel. Don't worry about it, you know. See what I'm saying? Because you need these things, okay? In the trafficking, in modern-day slave trade, you know, they offer, again, you know, offer love. Oh, we love you. They'll go to all countries all across the world. Um, well, you know, America's just the greatest country in the world. And I, you know, and I know you want a great education so that your child won't be as poor as you are. So why don't you um, let me take them to the country? We can get them into the country on a visa or whatever, okay? So just let us handle that, okay? And usually, again, they're picking people in countries and villages that aren't hip or wise to modern day facilities or anything. So they're vulnerable. Okay? And everybody wants their child to have what? Better than what they have. Okay? And so somebody promises that. They, that they might have what looks like a church. Okay? Or what looks like a, um, an organization that's just philanthropic. Okay? And we're going to take you and we're going to take care of that child. We're going to take them back and we'll send you reports and we'll let you know. These are all systems of love bomb. When it's, when it's too good to be true and it happens too fast, that's a love bomb. Okay? And now we're going to talk about how that love bomb explodes. Okay? So one of the things that starts happening is a person or a group or organization begins to take small bits of control of your life. And you don't realize it until you've given up so much control, you don't have what we call any independence. In a relationship. All right, first he's taking him back and forth to school. Okay, and he's calling him at the beginning of work, and he's like, "Oh, I'll pick you up. I'll take you to work. I'll pick you up." Okay. Oh, don't worry. We'll take you to class. We'll take you back. Hey, and then after this, we can go to, you know, one of the Bible meetings and everything. All right. When you get to the Bible meeting, everybody's hugging you and loving you. Like, oh, it's great to have you here. Da -da 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 -da. Everybody's serving you food. Okay. The person that has the love bomb against uh, trafficking of people. Okay. Again, they have an organization that offers a lot of love. We can give you these resources and that other. The pimp is like always picking her up, getting papers for her and everything, and stuff like that. Get you hooked up on the welfare system and all that. Okay. Think about it for a minute. He's always picking you up. Stuff that you used to do for yourself. It's taking away your independence. You see what I'm saying? Because after all, I mean, after all, I mean, getting kids back and forth from school, I'll take them to the doctor. We always picking you up. You ain't got time to find out about other people and other parties. You find out for yourself. Always picking you up. Okay? And what they do again, like I said, with the love bomb and the other villages, they are always picking them up, taking care of stuff, and they're going to take them to another country to give them all this stuff. But how much the independence can they have in another country that they don't know anything? Then all of a sudden he's like, well, you know what? Let's say he, he gets in trouble. I'm having trouble, you know, when he was always acting up and everything. It's a boy. It's a girl. Children always do act up. More so than we think they would. Okay. Uh, do me a favor, pal, okay? Um, go that way. I know where to go to the gym. Okay, all right, I understand. Um, Next thing, they, next thing you know, they're trying to discipline. Okay. All right. Well, if, well, you've already had even this aspect of your life. You're thinking like, well, it seems to be okay, right? But you got to watch that. How well do they know you or your children? How well do they know you or your situation to discipline? Okay. And they'll even hit you with arguments like, well, you know, you need to trust me. You need to be a little bit more dependent on me. Don't be afraid to be <coughs> dependent on me. That's what I'm here for. Okay? All right? Um, they'll even tell you, you're too independent. And if you're a woman, really look out for that word. They tell you, you're too independent. What it means, you're too independent means I, you get tough to control. Okay? 
um, in a religious sect, okay, they want you to depend on them for everything. You know, you don't need the outside world, okay? In the trafficking, in the pimp world, don't, you don't need to listen to everybody else. They don't know. I know you. Who did this for you? Who does that for you? Who does this, that, and the other? Who picks up your kids? Hey, who takes you back and forth from school? Who takes you to work? Who has all the things that your child needs to, to have? Okay? Bits and bits and bits of control. Okay? And then the argument becomes the other way that they make sure that you're dependent on them. They start stripping away what used to be your support system that helped you be dependent or help you to be independent. In other words, don't depend on somebody else's support. Just depend solely on myself, the organization, and so forth. Depend on me. So the way they do that is, all right, what what you talk to your sister about what we're doing for? What's she got to do with it? She don't know our relationship. Well, your parents, they really don't understand our religion and everything like that. Okay? You know, they... They want you to be dependent on them. They don't want you to grow up. Okay. Well, what do y'all know about how things operate over here in the United States? I have to have your, your child's papers and visas and everything. Okay? Don't you report back to your family. You're over here now. You belong with us. We're your family. You don't need another family. You don't need all of them. They don't know what you're talking about. You don't need them. I got everything you need. Everybody simply tells you that they have everything that you need, everything that they supply. That's taking away your independence. That's making you dependent. Okay. The next thing we want to worry about is um, conformity. Okay. And when I say conformity, I mean in extreme conformity. And I'll give you an example of what I mean. Okay. Acting and doing, even dressing, all behavior has to be exactly the same. All thinking has to be the same. We call it dogma when all the thinking has to be the same. For example, okay, how are we all dressing here today? Okay. Yeah, I don't think anybody's really got pretty much what the stuff, maybe leggings for the winter. Okay. But even the leggings are different colors, right? Everybody's got a different way of dressing, different hairstyles and everything, all right? That's, you know, multicultural. Dogma requires you to dress everybody exactly the same way or as close to the same way as possible. Even wear your hair the same way. It can even be so much as language and terminology is the same, and even how you speak that terminology has to be the same. Now, I'll give you an example. I, um, when I was at the University of Cincinnati, a friend of mine was involved with um, a different Christian group. And so I decided, you know, to you know, go and, and see about it. I was always curious about how other people practice their religion. And one of the things, like, you know, if you're in Christianity, right, something happens that's great, or if you're in church and you hear something that's wonderful, you say what? What do you say? Amen. Amen. Right? How do you say it? Though? You never thought about how you say it, right? You just say Amen. Some people are like, amen! You know, they shout out loud. You know, somebody's like, whew, amen. Right? Okay, we all say it different ways. Amen, brother, you got this, that, and the other. All right? But in this one, he was like, I said something, he's like, amen. Okay, well, I didn't think much about it, right? And so, then I, looked, I was around and somebody else in the church, and another man said, amen. All right, so I didn't really think nothing about it. I just thought, well, that's what he said. So we were driving back um, home, or driving back to my home, and I said something. And he said something. I was like, wow, that was really, you know, really cool. I said, amen, brother. He's like, amen. <laughs> well, no, look at what he's doing. Okay. He was trying to get me to say it the same, same way. And I, after a while, I was driving the car and everything, so I said, let me see what something right quick. So every time he said something, like he thought it was prayer, I said, like, hey, amen, buddy. He like, amen. Like he was trying to get me to say it exactly. exactly how he says it, okay? And everybody, every male would say amen exactly that same way, okay? And so 
So they were, you know, they were pressuring me to say a certain way. Okay. Um, they were pressuring people to, the men always had to wear suits. Okay. Nothing wearing, wrong with wearing suits, right? Because those people were African Americans and we don't dress fancy on any other day. We gon' dress fancy on Sunday, Christmas, and let it be Easter. Oh, it's gonna be on. Mm. But they wanted you to wear a business suit all the time at church. You know, where they had to be conservative and they dressed all the time. But it had to be the exact same summer skirt, all right? Might be different, varying color and everything, but it had to be the same style. Could be any other type of style. I want you to listen to my man, okay? Because this is what goes to you too. All right. Um, he was one of the kids. He wants your kid to act and talk the way that he wants him to act. And so it's no longer how you want him to talk or say things. He's going to say, well, you need to discipline him this way. And it has to be exactly this way. That's the dog. Okay. And then if he doesn't do it that way or whatever, he gets these little punishments. He's always winding up in his room. Yeah. For something that might not be in his room, right? That's why I call it in his room. We sound like, all right, you know what? You can't play for an hour. That's enough punishment for a kid, believe it or not. An hour is like, oh, the end of the world. That's like being in prison. Okay? But it becomes dog. He has to dress him this way. His hair has to be this way. He's telling you about dog when he has to dress a certain way. Okay? When you go to maybe a restaurant or whatever, restaurants have an exact way of dressing. But if they're dressing that way all the time, not just in the restaurant, but even at another bar. So we don't think about this, we don't recognize this. Some restaurants actually do traffic people in the slave. Okay. They can't speak the language because they keep them out of knowledge. They only have certain ways of speaking. They only say certain things in certain ways. Okay. That's dogma. That's language. That's control. That's conformity. Pimps gonna force his women to conform. Right? They're going to wear that, those, those clothes that certain way. Their body has to look a certain way. Right? They even control what they eat. Right? Think about it. Control what you eat and how you eat it and how you look from just your physical dress down to your physical body and make you feel bad because you can't conform. Okay? You're starting to get to that point of taking control of your life. The next thing we're talking about is brainwashing. Okay. And this is a tricky one too. Okay. You know, brainwashing is a system of tearing a person down on one side, building them up on another side. You know what I'm saying? Tearing a person down on one side, building them up on another side. And usually the attack is on the way you think and the way you act. And then they build you up on another side. It's usually a side that they want or that they see that they can use. You know what I'm saying? That they say that they can use. And if it isn't, they'll build you up on one side by giving you the tools that they want you to be good at. Okay? And then praising you on that side that you do. And on the end, it's usually limited, and it's usually something they can manipulate, it's something they can use. So let me give you an example of how a pimp brainwashes women, okay? Because, I mean, a lot of people think that women just want to be, quote, unquote, prostitutes. That's not always the case. There might be some that actually do get that way, but it's very rare. Okay, so he tears you down. What makes you think you can do this? Did I tell you you could do this? There you go again thinking. Ain't nobody tell you to think. You're stupid. Okay? That's why you ain't got no discipline. You're lazy. That's why you need me. That's why I came into your life. Because I saw I needed to help you. Who's the one that gave you these clothes? Who's the one that took you out that bus stop and put you in a house? I showed you all these things in life. You didn't know how to do this. I'm the one that showed you how to do this. Okay? But you are good at one thing. Of course, that one thing is something sexual or something manipulative. I want you out there doing this. If he's a kid, you are good at one thing. You are good at getting people to give you that heart. 